This is a single map, and did you know that you can expand it? So this map is now the max level, and look at how large that area is. Wait a minute, I wonder what the largest map you can make is. So I found that by placing item frames on a wall, and then by getting two maps next to each other, you can make a mega map. Now the cool thing about this is that there's no limit, okay? Okay. Okay. Yup. So today we're gonna make a humongous map of my entire world. If you didn't know, maps are kinda laggy and have sorta been known to corrupt worlds. Oh man, I hope nothing bad happens. The thing about this map room is that I can't just make it. I also want the surrounding area to look good, and that's gonna require a lot of preparation. I have an idea on where to start this project, but first we're gonna need to collect some items. Whoa! So I just downloaded this texture pack that makes item frames invisible. Part of me kinda wanted to surprise you with floating items and stuff, but I got too excited. This looks so cool. So first of all, we need some black concrete, iron blocks, some beacons, obby, and then a flint and steel. Then we need to find a location to build this map room. Well, this area already has a lot of builds, and from the tests I did on the creative world, I don't really want to make the map room near any of these because I'm pretty sure it's going to lag. How about this place? Yeah, it does seem to be out of the way for the most part. Please be surface, please be surface. Ever since the Caves and Cliffs update, whenever I make a new portal, I always end up like 40,000 miles underground. Anyways, this place is kind of cool. First of all, I do want to mark out a concrete circle for the map room. I definitely didn't mess that up several times. From edge to edge, that should be 101 wide. And by doing the math, that means there are going to be over 8,021 maps for an entire layer. This is certainly a pretty massive place, but even though it's marked out, it's not quite ready for the maps. You're going to need a little backstory. Ryan the Skyan. Yes, this man. He recently challenged me to dig a big hole in my world. At first I said no, then he told me again, and I still said no. But then this itching thought grew within my mind. What if I dug a big hole? So I got back to my employee, Ryan, and said, I'm gonna blow up a massive hole. Thank you for the idea. Oh man, was that a mistake to say. Last I checked, the game was still called Minecraft and they had not relabeled it to TNT Craft, all right? So think about what you're doing. Just dig the hole with your hands, okay? You're an adult, I, I think. I don't know if you are. So yup, I guess we're gonna get started with digging this 350,000 block hole by hand. Okay, to at least make this as fast as possible, let's set up a full beacon here. And hey, on a quick side note, have you checked if you're subscribed? These videos take a really long time to create, and if you enjoy them, it would mean so much if you clicked that button so you don't miss out on any future content. Cool, next I want to set up a temporary storage, that way when we're mining the hole we can save all the blocks, which should come in handy later. Well anyways, this shovel's about to break, so let's go do what I do best and over-prepare. First of all, I want to hit up the main storage. Yes, I knew we had just a few tools here. Now at the gold farm, we can quickly repair all of them. So now that we're severely over-prepared, I'm gonna quickly mine this entire layer of dirt out. Have you ever stayed up to 2 a.m. mining thousands of dirt blocks and listening to Lo-Fi Girl? No? Just me? Hello, Mr. Donkey. What? I just blinked and it's gone. That's so weird. Minecraft can be so laggy sometimes. There's our first chest, second, third. I will definitely find a use for that in the future. But you know what's next? All of the stone. And I think the way we're gonna do this is by mining a single quarter of the hole at a time. Maybe we should create a trench on these first two sides. Why does this look so cool? If we start on this first quarter, will I still get the haste effect the whole time? Hello there, Mr. Pillager. Oh man, that's tragic. Look at all the resources in these chests. The funny thing is that I'm completely full on stone, so... And that is the final block of the entire first quarter. Yeah, it's definitely kind of boring, so I think I'm gonna change things up. Rather than mining this next quarter, we're actually gonna do the opposite side. So that means two more trenches. Okay, that's kind of cool. Sometimes these minecarts will have enchanted golden apples. Will I be lucky? Nope. 
I've concluded there are three ways to mine. First of all, we can do the fun way, which is one layer at a time. This way is perfect for when you get bored and you want to change. Second, we got the, um, the two layers at a time. I know, it's creative. This is faster than the one layer, but for whatever reason, it really makes you bored. Finally, we got the third method that I like to call the efficient method. Here we mine five or six layers wide, and then we take it all the way to the ground. Hey, look, it's a wandering trader. Got anything good? Um, the game keeps despawning these mobs. Okay, for real though, that joke is probably getting old. Ooh, look at this. We got two minecarts next to each other. Not totally sure if that's rare or not. As I finished up the second half, I made sure to collect all the items for the upcoming phase of this map room. Yes, sir, that's halfway. Look at my stone mine stats. Well, I'm kind of in a dilemma right now. I either do the small side and be lazy, or the large side and not be lazy. I mean, it's all gotta go eventually. Might as well do this half. Yo, is that a spider spawner? No, 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 oh gosh, okay, okay, okay. Please ignore that overreaction. I was literally still full health. As I continued to mine, the hours flew by until I found something amazing. Yo, it's a pig. This thing can absolutely not die. Let's quickly mine you down, buddy. Careful now. Great, good, perfect. If this pig dies, then I will literally delete my hardcore world. So the stakes, you could say, are pretty high. Or the pork chops. I had to. There we go, the pig is at the bottom. Now we need to just block all the places he can die. Now that the pig is safe, I'm gonna finish mining this third quarter. And finally just block the mine shaft off. One more side, let's do this. Oh, we also just got this sheep that fell into the hole. I'm gonna quickly get a name tag on him. Done. Oh. And then Jeb is your new name. Perfect. So it's the same deal. We need to keep him alive. And this is the final block here. I think I'm gonna mine this one by hand to celebrate. And there it is, 350,000 blocks all dug by hand. Before we move on to decorating this pit, I wanna get all these items out of here. So... In case you were curious about what I got from this entire place, about 20,000 dirt and grass, 10,000 granite, diorite, and andesite, and like two shulkers full of iron and coal ore, plus 200,000 stone blocks. Now we're gonna start with beautifying this mess. Wait, is beautify even a word? Oh, it is. First of all, this concrete ring can go. Now I need to explain the plan to you. If we were to just place the maps right now, it would look pretty bad because there wouldn't be any light. I might have a solution to fix this, but it's gonna require about five shulker boxes full of glowstone. Hopefully, please, please, please. Back when I AFK'd for 30 hours to get the emeralds for the emerald beacon, I also made sure to save all the glowstone from the witches, and that should be all we need. Then we can just come into the pit and start filling the floor in. I just had an idea. If we place some beacons around the pit, I should get the speed effect, which would make placing the glowstone on the bottom a lot quicker. Now we got four max power beacons surrounding the pit, and I should be able to finish placing the glowstone. Oh, oh gosh, I just had a thought, and now I can't unthink it. Why does this glowstone kind of look like a bunch of beans? I told you, and now you're never gonna unsee it. We're gonna quickly take a little break from the pit and start the fun part. For this mysterious fun part, we're gonna need a bunch of iron, redstone dust, and then compasses. That is a weird word. Now to the sugarcane farm. Let's grab a few shulkers of this. Finally, we can use these materials to make some maps. However, these aren't for what you think. These are planning maps. Well, actually, they're just normal maps, but you, you get what I mean. These maps are gonna help plan where the rest of the world is gonna go. You see, the size of this pit is very intentional. It's completely perfect so that it will fit my end portal transformation, as well as the Castle Island over 10,000 blocks away. Well then, we better get started. Okay, I think we need to start here and go in that direction. Oh my, wait, how do I even keep these organized? How about I put them in my inventory? 
Okay, oh no, the inventory is full. Let's quickly land and try to empty these into a shulker. That's not too bad. I guess we just keep repeating this for another hundred maps or so. This should be as far as we need to go. Now I believe we need to turn left and then keep going. Yo, it's the Skull Island, let's go. I cannot wait to see this on the final map. But for now, because we got our planning maps, let's get back to the beans. <coughs> I mean glowstone pit and place these on the floor. Wait, which way do they go? Oh, here we are. All right, now I just need to keep these organized. And these should be the last ones. Wow, that looks insane. Just imagine what the end result will be. Speaking of the end looks, this place with all the walls and everything is kind of just ugly. So what we're gonna do is leave the hardcore world and go on to a creative world. Now I'd like to design a building that can go on top of the pit. I just got a really cool idea. I need to run it by you. You know how maps allow you to quote unquote, observe the world. What if on top of the pit, we make a massive observatory? So instead of making you watch me build this, you're just gonna watch the time lapse. I had to learn how to use world edit. And once I did, making this only took about four hours. This is just the first half though, because now we need the walls for the pit. So... Anyways, now we can hop back onto the hardcore world. No, wait a minute. So I just checked and this lower part isn't gonna fit. I'm gonna need to remove an additional layer around this entire circle. Here we go then. Water, hello. Oh, no, 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 no. Lock it off, come on. Okay, Dream, where are you at? That was actually a pretty cool clutch. That should be it for mining the entire hole. To actually make these walls look good, we're gonna need to collect a huge list of items. Fortunately, I think we actually have all of these. Some gray concrete, deep slate tiles, all the andesite we collected from mining, smooth stone that we can quickly cook at the super smelter, cyan terracotta, polished andesite stairs, stone brick walls, andesite slabs, finally a bunch of obsidian. Now that we have all the materials, I wanna start by making an andesite and obby ring down here. And now let's go ahead and build the walls up with a cool time lapse. Ladies and gentlemen, whoa. That's kind of an illusion, do you see it too? All right though, now we need to build the observatory on top, which is also going to require about 76,000 items. The first of which is about 8,000 black stained glass. How much do we actually have? Okay then, yeah, we're gonna need some more. Don't villagers sell glass? Yes, they do. Eh, not too shabby, but okay. The villagers can't trade anymore because it's night. So actually, let's take a trip to the end really quick. And now we can take this sand and then cook it into glass. Then the glass turned into black stained glass. And now that that's settled, let's go ahead and get five shulkers of deep slate tiles. And then by using the stone cutter, we actually save on materials. Now some polished andesite. Oh no, it seems like we need some stone. Do you think we have enough stone? There we go, stone bricks and then black concrete. Next, we need some black stone. So first let's AFK at the gold farm for a bit. I'm pretty sure that's enough. Now to the piglin farm. Nice, that checks off the black stone. Now this one's kind of tricky. We're gonna need a bunch of obsidian. And I sort of used the rest of what I had for the lower walls. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this in one breath. Obsidian farm. Ugh. Thanks to enx 4 for the obsidian farm design. Now he should start attacking and then instead of us getting hurt, he breaks the obsidian. Doesn't seem to be working. Oh no, 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 it got out destroying the galaxy. Please follow me, get away, get away, get away. Anyways, now you need to die. Okay, it seems to be working. Great, I'm gonna AFK this for about an hour and hopefully we have enough obsidian once it's done. Oh my goodness, yup, I think our obsidian crisis is solved. I still need to collect a bunch more items, so... And finally, we just need a few deep slate brick walls. Okay then, let's move all 76,000 items to the pit. 
So before we get building, we need to clear even more trees around this pit so the observatory fits. There we go. Now it's time to get building. And that's the base. Just wow. I was thinking that we could use the black stained glass as a floor for the room. That way we could just look down onto the maps once it's finished. Here is the first glass and wait, what in the heck is even that? Somehow a bush is poking through the wall. Okay, Mojang, I see how it is. That's it for the glass and now we can begin with the actual observatory. There are the first four walls. The days kept passing as I continued to build. This dome on top is going to be very satisfying. There are the first two petals finished. And there it is. That looks so good. Now it's time for the long dreaded part, mapping the entire world. To do this, we're actually going to need about 8,000 item frames. I decided to leave this part a secret until now, but every time I had the chance, I would AFK at my hoglin farm for leather. Yeah, that's probably enough leather. Now the other ingredient in item frames are sticks, approximately 64,000 sticks. Wait, I actually think the stick farm has a whole bunch of sticks. Yo, I just keep lucking out with all these farms. And then we just need to craft the item frames. And with all of these, we should go ahead and start placing them on the entire floor. Dude, I just had an ingenious idea. Have you ever seen a map of the world? And you know how they have those like little mini circles or something? What if in the middle of this map, we do that same thing and inside of it, we have the end dimension. I am 100% doing this, so we need our first circle. Okay, there we go. Now the tricky thing about the end is that because everything looks the same, we need it to be mathematically accurate. I'm sorry, I had to make that pun eventually. Before we begin mapping the end, we need to craft all the maps. Back to the sugarcane farm. This thing produces about 50,000 sugarcane per hour, so honestly, I think we're pretty much set. Then all of the iron and redstone to make more compasses. Well, the time has come. I've done the math, and from here on the end chip, we need to go 32 maps per row. Before we start, I want to organize my inventory so we don't get lost. Now for the moment I've been fearing, it's time to fly over the void and do this. Okay, keep mapping. Wait, what's my Y level? Can't get too low. Wow, these maps are completely gray. There's land. That was low-key stressful. Anyways, let me get the rest of these quickly. Here comes the second row. No, it's the void again. This is editing Wumba here. I just want to say how incredibly difficult this was. I had to watch my Y level, so I wouldn't go too low into the void, but also my elytra, how many fireworks I had, plus keeping in the correct direction, making sure to map every time, keeping the maps in order, and finally making sure I didn't have a full inventory at any point. I'm pretty sure you can see why I wasn't talking to the camera during this part. Goodness, I think that's it for the first two rows. Let's quickly get back and see if it worked. That looks insane! Okay then, I'm gonna keep mapping this end until the entire place is full. That's the 2000th map I've made in this world. And there it is, the final map for the end dimension. I can't say I've ever seen someone make a map in the end. And I'm seriously surprised because this looks so cool. Can you believe that this is only about 20% of the entire world map? Yeah, speaking about that, let's just not because I really don't want to do this. Literally every map will need to be perfect. This is essentially an 8,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. Well, after recuperating for approximately six minutes and 14 seconds, I decided to start. So each row from here over is 97 maps long. I think if I pack enough shulkers and make sure not to mess up, I could do four rows at once. Okay then, here we go. Whoa, that's my old gas farm. I completely forgot about that. Oh, here's spawn. That's pretty cool. There, that should be the fourth row finished. I'm crossing my fingers that I didn't mess up anywhere. Here goes nothing. 
I actually did it perfectly. I won't bother explaining my sorting process in this video, but I will put it in the description in case you're curious, because it was the only thing that made this possible. As I continued to map the world, I hit some pretty crazy milestones, like 3,000 and 4,000 total maps. There was even a random time when I found some old chunks when I first started my world almost 9,000 days ago. What? These items are basically artifacts. I feel like I need to save these or something. And after a few more hours, the middle section was totally finished. Um, remember when I said maps could corrupt worlds? Well, I'm not even halfway finished placing maps and I'm already lagging really hard. I don't want to lose my hardcore world. So unfortunately, we're going to end the video here. Thanks for watching. Absolutely not. I will not stop even if it means my world might be destroyed. Let's finish this map. Wow, look at this cave. I'm gonna mark these coordinates down. What is wrong with this village? Whoa, that beacon looks really cool on the map. Can someone please explain what's going on here? Why is a desert village in the plains biome? And also, why does this island look like a gummy bear? Here are the final few maps for the first half. Wow, w what's that? Wait, have you been watching me this entire time? <coughs> Clearly mapping for hours was making me a little delirious, but I was getting closer and closer to my goal. The time was almost there. And then finally, after hitting the 8,000th map, I was done. Here we are, the final few maps, and this is it. This looks pure amazing, but yeah, I am kind of getting like six frames a second. Still though, at least my world didn't corrupt.